Morning, Welcome Nathan. Welcome to the Nathan Review. Nathan Obodai Kwao. Hello, hello. <laughs> How's up, what's up? Charlie. Tuesday morning. Yep, 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 yep. Ready we're here. To, ready to roll. Yes, we're yeah, ready man. to rock and roll. Yes, Charlie. So, <laughs> it's like Christmas is coming gradually. Yep. It's, you know, it's like it's... It doesn't want to come, but it's coming. <laughs> it's coming like okay. Well, well, apart from, you know, Christmas and it's... Uh, mm -hmm. To borrow the term from my international law class, the, it's concomitant... Yeah, man. <laughs> things. Issues. Mm -hmm. There are other things as well. Politics... Politics is there. It's, there. it's not yeah, going it's away not going anytime anywhere. soon. Yes, and also healthcare issues. Yes. COVID yes. Now, I'm told there's meningitis. That's another one they're asking us to be alert <laughs> of. In fact, the graphic front page has some interesting stories. It says, be alert to meningitis. Don't self-medicate. Ghana Health Service wants. This is a front page story. Also, stand still. In fact, it's, it's, it's funny. Graphic and Times use the same word. For their front page yes stand yes, still yes, yes. xmas shopping creates great luck and this is by graphic reporters where everybody went out to write a story and then adhere strictly to road regulations drivers cautioned ahead of xmas this is on page 16 of the daily graphic okay the ghanaian Times says accra at standstill mm. unitide causes traffic jam mm -hmm. and there's a picture an area of your vehicles in traffic at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle. It's an absolute lock there mm -hmm. two policemen interdicted for attempting to sell firearms Mm. Kaneshi Market fire victims to receive financial support and shopping for Xmas. Buyers suffer price hikes. Mm. The finder leads with go to court, stop the violence. National Peace Council charges NDC. Also, MPP accuses NDC of inciting supporters to set markets ablaze. This is on page 8. Then there's a story that is from what we started talking about a couple of days ago. Drought foreign traders could cause May shortage, according to a report. Mm. And then China's cherry automobile introduces SUVs pickups into the Ghanaian market. Meanwhile, treasury bills sales significantly undersubscribed. That's on page five. Okay, the Chronicle says psychiatrist warns government legalizing weed in Ghana is dangerous. Stop wow. it. <laughs> Plus drama in court over discharge of Togoland separatists. Now, moving to the new crusading guide, NPP fingers NDC over market fires. Also, Bonkatamanzo MCU hot as group petitions Akufado to sack him. Tension mounts at Northing Development Authority and in Sawam MPP youth organizer donates car to party. Meanwhile, the Peace Council story is also here on page 10. NDC protests could spark post-election violence according to the National Peace Council. Okay, the Daily Statesman says, NDC behind market fires, MPP alleges, stop deceiving your supporters, Gabi Edges Mahama, and Ghana to receive COVID-19 vaccines by end of March 2021. That's on page 3 of the Daily Statesman. The BNFT talks about the currency. CD remains stable amid political impasse, Christmas season. Analysts say outlook is still positive. Also, food prices shake off post-election tension. Isoko reports show stability in two major markets. And migrant remittances contribute 5.5% to GDP. Okay, the Daily Guide's front page reads, Rioting NDC supporters stone police. Hmm. Officers injured, cars damaged. Hmm. AG Powers case adjourned indefinitely. Government orders 6 million COVID-19 vaccines. Mm. That's on page 3 of the Daily Guide. Wow. And this one, Bernard, provides more detail on the guest house episode from Charlie. yesterday. Hmm. So the Daily Guide front page says, Chief, 70. Oh, so it's not 65, it's 70 I, 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 Okay, I suspect. Yeah, Maybe yeah, because, no, yesterday it was reported 60. Be okay. like his age has increased. <laughs> <laughs> it says, Chief, 70, yeah. dies during sex. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> now let's take you into the online space citynewsroom.com NDC protests could spark post-election violence this is according to Peace Council also NDC supporters protest against EC over election results in Techiman Otokunos driver picked up by NIB this is not the bank this is the bureau and someone EC over Guan's exclusion from parliamentary poll Ama Kofibua to parliament meanwhile Greek ministry says permits issued for importation of maize to feed poultry so we're going to import maize to feed mm. our poultry. Now, citybusinessnews.com also talks about the poultry story. Producers of poultry products lament shortage of feed. Meanwhile, BOG governor says returning economy to part of fiscal consolidation is critical. And Guta demands compensation for affected traders from the market fires. MyJohnOnline.com. Techiman South election day shooting. The incident that led to the death of persons at collation center. Also, MPP accuses NDC of orchestrating recent market fires. Meanwhile, NIB arrest Otokonos driver in connection with recent fires and uh, we have evidence of vote padding in favor of MPP 
according to Sami JMF. If you go to Star FM, NDC behind recent market fires, according to MPP, also blind father changes his speech impaired children as he goes begging. And Crowa MPP executive filled with fisheries minister mm. after defeat. Mm. Mm. Meanwhile, police are hunting for a man for he beheading his mother. Hey, Charlie, we are doing things so. Now, GNA leads with parliament approves 10 million dollar tax waiver on a sin fosu road project so nyani records sharp increase in christmas consumables and water crisis hits abuazi and abuasi communities in the western region the ghana report is talking about fire destroying five markets in one month is yesterday's story with some additional files meanwhile u.s based ghanaian surgeon pleads guilty in 29 million dollar fraud case oh it <laughs> and of course the u.s and everybody else globally is talking about the uk the new strain of COVID and a long-awaited COVID aid package, Nathan. So those are the headlines from my side. Okay, all right. Let, let's get into um, the. I think we can start with the Daily Graphic or the Ghanaian Times. They have the same story. Okay, so, so know, both of them are talking here. about traffic. Yes. Now on page seventeen mm -hmm. of the uh, Ghanaian Times, actually on page sixteen and seventeen, they've got Christmas-related stories. Mm -hmm. So page seventeen says across standstill you tide causes traffic jam story written by abigail arthur mm -hmm. says ahead of the festive season the traffic situation in the country's capital accra has heightened to its peak bringing vehicular movement to a standstill some drivers describe such traffic situations in local parlance as bumper to bumper mm -hmm. drivers and commuters suffer unbearable traffic jams on major roads such as the Kolibu Teaching Hospital through the Abosokan Road, mm. across Central using the Graphic Road, Circle and Beyond, and heading towards Kaswa through Odoko, mm. Sakaman and Wager. Mm. Others were the Tema, Pokwasi, Nungwa, 37 Military and Airport Roads. Throughout last week, the Ghanaian Times observed unbearable traffic congestion in the city and it could, and it could take one, for instance, close to four hours to get to Kanishi from Circle in the rush hours. The graphic also sent its reporters out and the stairs as Christmas inches closer humans and human and vehicular traffic situation at most city centers and Accra and Kumasi particularly is worsening as shoppers and traders make last minute efforts to cash in on festivities. I wonder what they're even going to buy. Now roads leading to CBD <laughs> of the cities are choked with vehicular traffic that is becoming frustrating for drivers and commuters alike. A trip that will usually take an hour to complete now takes as long as four hours, compelling passengers who are unable to deal with the situation to get off the vehicles to continue on foot, especially if they are not too far from their destinations. Then they start describing the places, talking about MTTD, uh, police side, talking about the central business district, talking about the uh, parts of Kanishi, talking about Malam. All of those places exist, have gridlock. Now, still on road issues, page 16 of the graphic is quoting the executive director of the Road Safety Commission or authority, May Obri Wahin, and she's asking drivers to adhere strictly to road regulations mm. ahead of the Christmas. You know that Christmas sometimes comes with people speeding and leading yes, to all kinds yes. of problems. Now, with three days to Christmas, the National Road Safety Authority has cautioned drivers and other road users to strictly adhere to road traffic regulations to prevent the crisis that are associated with the season. It noted that the hurly barely associated with the Utah portent higher risk of road crisis. The reason all road users needed to take personal responsibility for their safety. Well, if you um, stay with the Ghanaian Times on page 16, mm -hmm. they say buyers suffer price hikes yeah. as they shop for Xmas. Now, with three days to Christmas, <laughs> yeah, major markets across the capital city Accra have been flooded with assorted items to mark the celebration mm. from confectionery to clothing foodstuff ac accessories wigs Christmas decorations mm. etc uh, have been displayed um, and traders are obviously hoping to cash in on the season now some of the traders are recording an increase in sales with mm. few days to the Christmas celebration amidst hikes in prices of commodities groceries and other household supplies were the major commodities which are recording the increase in sales mm -hmm. as well as price hikes so Did they give the specific categories of products that are increasing in price because yeah. the BNFT is suggesting that food prices have stabilized mm. so i'm wondering which prices oh i mean the, for example they interviewed people who were selling things like mirrors trousers somebody said for example we used mm -hmm. to buy a bag of sugar this mm -hmm. is somebody who makes popcorn mm -hmm. we used to buy a bag of sugar at 170 cities mm -hmm. and a bag of popcorn maize at 130 cities mm -hmm. but just this morning a bag of sugar is being sold at 195 cities hey. and a bag of popcorn maize is going for 190 cities. Forgive. So that's serious because the uh, BNFT's lead story is saying that 
data from the agricultural research firm Isoko have indicated that food prices remain fairly stable and show no effect from post-election disagreement the nation is witnessing after the December election. Food prices from two major markets, Techiman and Tamale, have not seen any significant changes after the general elections, even though these towns have witnessed some post-election disturbances firsthand. An analysis of average prices for 11 commodities showed four showed that except cereals, which witnessed a normal price change, all other foodstuffs remain stable. Now listen to this. The foodstuffs analyzed or commodities were cassava, as we call Agbeli, fresh <laughs> tuba, cassava, gari, cowpea, white, granite, shelled, maize, white grain, millet, grain, rice, local, soya bean, tomato, wheat grain, yam, and pona. Data from the tamale <laughs> market then starts, they give the details, so you can read the story, but basically they're saying that the price behavior is normal and it's not, pe people are not hiking prices in okay. anticipation of some prolonged post-election standoff. This is what Isoko is saying. Okay. Meanwhile, Ghanaian Times is saying that people what? say prices are high yes. of certain things. Yes, but if you stay with the Ghanaian Times on page 18, since you mentioned markets, now mm -hmm. it says, owners of nine shops or the nine shops at the Kandeshi market in Accra, which were ravaged by fire mm -hmm. on Saturday, will receive support from Maslock to mm -hmm. restock their shops. Mm -hmm. Now, the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Haji Ali Mahama, disclosed this yesterday and said this would be a supplement to the support being given to them mm -hmm. by the management of the market. Now, interacting with journalists on the sidelines of her visit to the market, she said the support had become necessary mm -hmm. because the traders needed money to restock new New stores allocated to them. Before we go into politics, I just want to finish up with the food story. So the finder has jumped on to stop what you did yesterday with the Agric Ministry. Drought foreign traders could cause May shortage, according to a report. And the story by Elvis Darkun says concerted efforts are needed to control foreign May traders from Burkina Faso, Niger, Nigeria to mitigate an estimated 360,000 metric ton shortage in May supplies needed in the country to meet domestic consumption. Estimated 3 million metric tons May production cut to 1.8 million. Maize production for 2020 was projected to hit the 3 million metric tons achieved last year or higher. But the southern and middle zones of Ghana experienced dry spells in March and April during the major farming season as well as another dry spell in July and August in the minor farming season, inhibiting productivity and forcing officials to revise their projections. Nathan, from 3 million to 1.8 million, so almost like a 1.2 million, million yeah. ton shortage. Yeah. Now, we also told that foreigners are also buying the maize. It is estimated that the foreign maize traded Traders who conduct business in northern Ghana could buy 360,000 metric tons of maize, representing 50% of the 720 tons of maize northern Ghana was expected to produce this year. Now, this story is a bit funny because if you come to city, citynewsroom.com, your interview with the PRO of the Ministry of Agriculture yes, is something different. He's saying that permits have been issued for importation of maize to feed poultry. You see, so the uh, finder is saying that because foreigners are buying the maize, there isn't enough maize to buy, which may be part one of the story. And then, the main issue is now press secretary to the Ministry of Agri, Isa Al Hassan says the sector minister has issued permits to some poultry farmers to enable them import maize to feed their birds amid a shortage in poultry feed in the country. Mm. Isa Al Hassan said on a city breakfast show that the ministry anticipated an increase in maize production in the country for the 2020 year. However, owing to some incidents of drought and flooding, its target was not met, causing a shortage. And in the background, some poultry farmers have told City News the shortage of feed has left their businesses in dire situation with some considering even selling shutting off down, and yes, shutting yes, down. Yes, yes, yes. So that's the story from the main side. Let's do some more politics now. Well, let's do some politics. On page two of the Daily Statesman, the governing MPP has accused the opposition NDC of being behind the many market fires being experienced in the country in recent times. Mm. Now, according to the governing party, utterances from some leaders and supporters of the opposition party mm -hmm. buttress their point. Mm -hmm. And there's a quote, for instance, the NDC national chairman, Samuel Fosuampofo, is on record to have incited his party foot soldiers to undertake a series of overt and covert operations, including setting markets ablaze and embarking on armed robbery attacks in order to create fear and a sense of insecurity in the country. Fosuampofo is, of course, being prosecuted for this treasonable comment, and the court has established, as a matter of fact, that it was his voice on that leak tape. End quote. Now, that's according to John Brady, who's the MPP's general secretary. And he said that in a statement that was released yesterday. That story actually is what the new crusading guide leads with. It says MPP fingers NDC over market fires. And it says the ruling MPP has strongly condemned the burning of markets in the country and insisted the NDC is using this strategy to express their outrage 
about the outcome of the election. In recent weeks, two major markets in Accra have been burnt. Kanishi Odona Cantamanto markets have all been burnt. Police have commenced investigations into the possible acts of arson. And then there's a full statement. Now, yesterday, we tried to get Mr. Buido to comment on this. He would not. But basically, the statement is titled, MPP condemns the burning of markets, calls for swift investigations and arrest of perpetrators. Now, there's also the Peace Council. I don't know if you have that story. NDC as protest could spark post-election violence. This is according to the National Peace Council. And the story is on citynewsroom.com. It says, the National Peace Council has condemned the recent protests by the NDC over the 2020 election result. The council in a statement advised the party to refrain from protesting as it has the potential to, quote, spark post-election violence and mar the entire peaceful electoral process. And, quote, NDC supporters across the country have been protesting the outcome of the election. Aside from the grievance of the constituency level, the NDC has also rejected the outcome of the presidential election. We saw an article Kufado declared president. Now, speaking about NDC protests, Nathan, there's a couple here. NDC supporters in Tichiman protest against EC results. Daily Guard also leads with the protest they did yesterday and the effect. You have the Daily Guard. Let me give you the Tichiman South okay. version first. And the story says that um, supporters of NDC in the Bono region have taken to the streets of the regional capital Tichiman to protest over the outcome of the 2020 general election. This is part of a series of demonstrations by the party to draw attention of the EC to what they term a flawed election. Nana Kufado and his party think Ghana belongs to MPP alone, but we want them to know that this country belongs to all of us and we are fighting for our democracy because if we let it go now, they will do worse next time. We want all the institutions of Ghana to come out and tell the truth so that justice will prevail. Okay. Um, if you go to, so the, the Daily Guide's third page also has details on the uh, riots or so that took place in Kumasi mm -hmm. on, this, on the part of the NDC. Uh, supporters, our reporter gave us that. However, there's another very interesting story on PC. This is a COVID related story. Mm -hmm. Now it says, Government orders 6 million COVID 19 vaccines. Mm. Now, Ghana's fight against COVID 19 has received a boost following the submission of requests by the government mm -hmm. and its development partners for the procurement of 6 million COVID 19 vaccines right. from the COFAX facility. The vaccines, which will be procured by the sector agency with advice from an established expert committee, mm -hmm are aimed at protecting the most vulnerable population against the virus. Right. Now, President Sekoufado in his 20th COVID-19 update announced the formation of an expert committee to help in the procurement and deployment of the COVID-19 vaccines in the country, assuring that Ghana would not be left behind in having access to the vaccines. Meanwhile, still on health, uh, alert to meningitis, don't self-medicate. Ghana Health Service wants, this is page 6 of the graphic, says the Ghana Health Service is alerting the public, particularly people living in the meningitis belt of the country, to the risk of the disease outbreak, for which reason they must avoid self-medication when they experience symptoms that look like malaria or flu. It has urged the public to quickly report such symptoms to any health facility to help forestall a possible outbreak of the condition, or of the highly fatal but treatable condition. The onset of the dry season initiates the meningitis season, which normally spans November to March. The meningitis belt includes Upper East, Upper West, Northern, Savannah and Northeast regions, and some parts of Bono and Bono East. In an interview with the Daily Graphic, <coughs> DG of Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patikuma Boaji said, the call was part of measures put in place to heighten surveillance nationwide. Let's come to the Chronicle. Okay, so if you go to the Chronicle on pages 2 and 3, a psychiatrist is warning Don't legalize that it. there's no need for legalization. Uh, Dr. Ruth Ousu Entry, mm. who is the head of the psychiatry unit at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, mm -hmm. has cautioned the government that marijuana remains a psychoactive substance mm -hmm. which poses risks to the Ghanaian society mm -hmm. and that the state should tread cautiously with its decision to decriminalize marijuana mm -hmm. for industrial and health use in the country. Though she admits that mm -hmm. cannabis can be used medicinally, she noted that it was, quote, too risky, end quote, mm -hmm. at the moment to legalize it for medicinal medicinal or industrial purposes in Ghana. <laughs> now, there's a couple of uh, crime-related stories. Ghanaian Times page 2 and then Daily Graphic page 26 have all kinds of issues. So, for example, two robbers killed at Kong in Savannah region. This is Samuel Dodu Damongo reporting that two suspected armed robbers have been killed at Kong in the Solatu Nakaba district in the Savannah region. They are among six gun and machete-wielding men who attacked and robbed some residents of Kong of an amount of 10,200 CDs yesterday morning at about 8 a.m. One of the two robbers, whose name was given as Osman Isaka 832, was overpowered by his victim who managed to disarm him. A police team went to the crime scene to retrieve the bodies of the two suspected robbers. The complainant took the locally manufactured single barrel guns 
and two shotguns that were that robbers possessed to the Tuna police station. And then the police said at 8 a.m. yesterday, one Abubakar and Nuruddin, age 34, accompanied by Bukhari Ibrahim, Al Hassan Seydu, Zakaria Malam, and Donyatna, all from Kong, reported they were attacked on their way to Tuna by six men wielding guns and machetes who robbed them of an amount of 10,000. 200 CDs. Okay, now on page 3 of the Ghanaian Times, says two policemen interdicted for attempting to sell arms. Oh boy. The police administration has interdicted two yeah. policemen who were allegedly arrested for attempting to sell a gun and ammunition mm. at a large in Accra over the weekend. The security personnel are Lance Corporal Emmanuel Ebusayal and Lance Corporal Suleiman Yusuf, all of the visibility unit of the police at the headquarters in Accra. The director of the Public Affairs Directorate, Superintendent of Police Sheila K uh, Kesi Abeye Bakman, mm -hmm. who disclosed these to the Ghanaian Times in Accra yesterday, said the action by the police admin was to give way for investigations into the case. Now, the two gentlemen were caught with one unregistered pistol and mm. 20 rounds of ammunition of 9 milliliter ammunition 59 rounds of m16 ammunition 38 rounds of ak-47 mm. assault rifle ammunition Sorry. and 53 rounds of g3 ammunition meanwhile still in that same paper fake policeman grab yes a, a 44 year old man who posed as a police inspector has been nabbed by the police in tuba in Accra. Bismarck Asabre is believed to be a, a, a member of a gang of five, reportedly parading themselves as police officers, arresting and taking money from people. The head of the public the head of public relations at the Accra Regional Police Command, mm. if DSP if you think they confirmed the arrest of the Ghanaian Times in Accra mm. yesterday. Speaking of arrest, let me end with the Otokuno driver arrest. This is also on citynewsroom.com. It says the National Intelligence Bureau NIB has picked out the driver of Deputy Com and, uh, Deputy NDC General Secretary Peter Boam Otokuno. As Otokuno confirms to City News that his driver Eric Adogla was picked up early Monday, December 21, without any indication of alleged wrongdoing. The lawyer for the case, Victor Adaudu, told City News that frantic efforts to have access to the driver have been frustrated by the National Investigations Bureau. Mr. Adaudu also accused the Bureau of planning to torture Mr. Adogla, who was picked up at his residence. We, his lawyers, have been denied access to him, and they are not even telling us where he is and where I can access him. This is very unacceptable, and we cannot be intimidated like this. I know he is with BNI, but they want to torture him and before giving us access to him. Mr. Adawudu said, we'll, we'll talk to Mr. Adawudu later this yes. morning for details on yes. this. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Bernard. That was the newspaper review.